Hey, hey, this is Mike Herrera. My band's called MXPX. You're listening to The Rad Dad Show. Hey, all you rad dads out there. Well, Mike, thanks for joining me on The Rad Dad Show today. I'm super stoked to have you here. I've been a longtime fan, um, and I'm excited to talk to you about parenting today. Um, yeah, I'm going to start came to the by, right place. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm going to start by asking you, who are you? So my name is Mike Herrera. Thanks, Brett. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's good to be on, man. This is different for me. Uh, I'm an artist. I play music. I've been doing this my whole life, my whole career. Um, and my band's called MXPX. We have a new record out called Find A Way Home. And this is a new era. You know, we've gone through different iterations of of you know life <laughs> i don't want to say life in general but uh some, some <laughs> of you know but but it's true i mean we're in this like almost like new era and new world you know the world has kind of been made new with technology and insanity and yeah and, uh, and here we are but but it's a good you know mxpx is all about positivity all about um you know problem solving um and I don't mean that in a literal sense necessarily with the songs necessarily, but the way I write it, 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 it presents a problem. And then, um, I try to present the upside, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, that, that's what, that's how I feel about, about a lot of our songs, but, um, find a way home. I mean, it's a perfect illustration of, of going through trial and error, making mistakes, coming out the other side and just never giving up because life, there's no real ending in life unless you're, gone so right you know we're all we're always learning there's always a way forward right like there's always a a path forward sometimes it's hard to find it but there's always a path forward i appreciate that uh that positivity comment and i think that is something that you know people who know your band know that's sort of an mxpx thing like there's just kind of this you know this positivity that shines through from the very beginning you know, in your music, even when you're talking about difficult topics. So, um, yeah. And, and I think especially on the new record, I love the new record, by the way, and we'll talk more about the new record, but the real reason you're here <laughs> yes. is you're a dad. I am. So how what many would kids you like you to know? <laughs> um, so I, I have two kids. Um, they are, uh, well, I have a 10 year old daughter and a seven year old son and, um, they, they're great kids. Love those kids. Yeah, we're, we're good. And I'm married. And uh, we live in Bremerton, Washington, as well as, you know, part time in, in Waco, Texas. But my kids are are homeschooled. So right. they haven't always been they've gone to school, they've gone to public or they've gone to private school, not technically public school, but, um, you know, preschool, all of that. And then, and then my daughter started school. So but but last few years, been um, homeschooling even before COVID, by the way. Oh, so that's um, what I was going to ask you. Is that something that was kind of spurred on by the pandemic? But it sounds like you were there before. It was literally a month coincidence, like a, the month before. It was it was starting the new, starting that new year of 2020. Um, my daughter left the schools that she was at or whatever. The school was just going through a lot of changes. It was a brand new school that was trying things and then trying something else and then trying something else. And we're like, okay figure out what you're doing. We're going to go over here. So it was like one of those things, um, which is so, it's so weird to talk about this on a, on an interview, but I got to remember it's, it's just the rad dad. Podcast. That's what it's all about. And so you know what? It's funny. I, I don't think we've ever had anybody on the show that at least it's come up that they homeschool their kids. So I'm super interested to hear about that. Like what that transition has been like for, you know, for your kids, but also for, for you guys. Cause there's, there's a balance here you know a lot of people it's back to school right now so we were just talking yeah. about it before we started like a lot of parents are like me where we're like okay this is great like the kids get back to their routine and everything um you've got to kind of make that work around home so tell me about that a little bit sure well i i both well i went to public school my whole life so i never i never went to private school but my kids you know they uh my my daughter was going to private school and then we made that transition like i was saying it was just we couldn't keep up with the the, the amount of rules we're like this is going to be it's probably just as bad in public school so my wife is actually a, an accredited teacher um she oh, taught cool. she taught um high school or she taught junior high high school and college she was a professor in college um mainly literature mainly like grammar things like that 
real nerd stuff. Um, <clears throat> loves to read, but very organized. So she, when she decided to take it on, she takes it very seriously. And she she um, has a schedule. She has a, a planner and she makes it happen. And people follow her on, on Instagram just for her stories, just to yep. like follow the curriculum that she's trying out. And she'll like talk about the math curriculum and the the reading that they're doing and they read a ton of books and they do like right now they started doing a harry potter um they've read the movie you know they've seen the movies they've read the books yeah now they were doing a listening uh, um, an acted out version of of harry potter so they're doing that thing as they're learning and making harry potter um pastries in harry potter you know, i little... saw that just yesterday on because i yeah i follow her on uh, on social media too and, there... <sighs> you know for, you for kind of that that parenting connection too and that's so cool like I, I i totally commend people who who like that takes so much time and effort and, you know, and, to it, do and, it, and it pays off because i mean anything you pay attention to will flourish and the kids are brilliant and they read and it's so cool to see my seven-year-old son that that isn't as studious as her, his sister, um, but he's still smart. He still like remembers every little thing he sees, and he's interested in like real, you know, history and wars and the, you know, learning about soldiers and and what they did in the different eras and the things, the the, the tools and the types of weapons they had, and like it's hilarious, you know, and. You know, he'll get on little little kicks of, about different things like that, like cow. You know, get into being a cowboy. Um, but I love that he just reads things. You know, he can read to the to to the extent that he has never seen a word, and he'll read it, and awesome. no problem, like no problem at all. And and it and it's because I think it's because of the way he learned to read. It's like a, I don't even know. But Holly, my wife, is um, she's a ninja, and it's a lot of work. Definitely stressful. Um, but it's not as weird as a lot of people think because the schedule, man, the schedule is so great. You don't mm -hmm. need to spend a full school day teaching your kids. You can, sure. You can, some people homeschool their kids like, okay, well, let's, let's do what they do in school. Let's do that. Get, get at your desk. But my kids have a desk. They have, the, you know, in both places, Texas or, or Bremerton, um, Washington, and there's about two hours of we're gonna do this, do this, go into this, go into this. And then that's about it as far as like actual doing math, actual doing writing, yep. doing cursive, learning cursive. My um my seven year old, he's in second grade or starting second grade this year, uh, right now, basically. And then uh, my ten year old is starting fifth grade. So um I mean we they kind of keep track of the types of curriculums and the things that they're learning based on the grade, right? Yeah. Just to, it makes it easier for us. But, um, but man, I, I would wonder what other questions you, you might have, you know, so it, I, I could keep going, but I think schedule is the main thing. Schedule is um, yeah. keep a schedule so that you're consistent because you should be consistent. Once you start school, have a, you know, Monday through Friday or Monday through Thursday. Actually, it's Monday through Thursday is regular morning school. Yeah. Uh, usually start around 8.30, 9, probably 8.30, done by 10.30. And I'm not part of this, by the way. I'm usually waking up, doing, feeding the dog, whatever, going and going for a run. But um, Monday through Friday and then Friday, or sorry, Monday through Thursday and then Friday is field day. Okay. Going somewhere, doing something, seeing things, and it could be as simple as going to a park and do something there. Something there, but um, it's super easy to just make it up. But but being consistent and doing the actual hard work as well. You can't yeah. just do a field trip Monday through Friday. Well, you're following that like program of like here's where we need to get in terms of a curriculum. But how we get there might be a little bit different from, you know, sort of the public school system that's got 30 kids in a class. And, mm -hmm. you know, you have to have that that per very particular structure to accomplish that. So that's really cool. And, you know, one thing that really sticks out to me is like as I've watched your, you know, followed your band uh, from sort of the, the 90s, you've always kind of had this like um, family aspect, you know, like, mm -hmm. yeah. for example, you know, I, I would look on your records, like uh, the the credits, 
And it's like, oh, Michelle Herrera. It's like, who's that? And then, you know, I order something from the web store and get a, you know, email back from your mom. And like, uh, just this like connection of having like family be part of it. And then over the last few years, how things have gotten so DIY and you kind of have, you know, things based out of your home and like, it, it just feels like that, that kind of fits with that whole MXPX philosophy. And so, you know, when I kind of caught on to that, you guys were homeschooling, it's like, oh, that totally, totally fits. And is that, is that like, do you feel like that's sort of like just your family's like ethos to, to getting things done? Well, it certainly feels that way. Um, you know, I think it works for us because of that. And it wouldn't work for everybody because we're mm -hmm. so used to doing things ourselves. We're so used to picking up that thing and doing it rather than calling somebody in to do it for us. And, and I'm not saying I do my own plumbing, you know, I call the plumber, but, but anything I can in my wheelhouse, which is a pretty big wheelhouse at this point, um, business wise, you know, just, I'm not just making, you know, writing a song, uh, I'm, I'm texting people. I'm like, okay, let's make sure we have these hoodies, blah, blah, blah. It's like stupid stuff like that. But, um, it's a spectrum, right? Like that's what yeah. we figure out. And to be able to be flexible with homeschooling is so useful for what I do in my job because mm -hmm. I need to be flexible. I need to, like, I just keep flying down to LA to do press. Um, and, and they're, they're like, maybe we planned a week ahead, you know? So it's like mm -hmm. things like that. And I'm going during the week. I'm not going, I'm not going during the weekend. So it's just like a little opposite of like what, you know, normal families might go through but um i think i think if you if you take that leap and you try homeschooling um you can always go back to public school I, there's literally nothing that the the state or the government wants more than your child in their their school so yeah. uh so this is not a big deal to go back so i mean you can try it and if it doesn't work for you just send them right back but um it's not always apparent what works for kids because all kids are, they respond differently to, to yep. different teaching styles. And, and um, I guarantee you all kids like to stand up every 15 minutes or 20 minutes, you know, in a certain age group. And it doesn't mean that they can't hang on and pay attention. It just means we all kind of, I mean, as adults, I need a second to shake it move it around, come totally. back, whatever. It, it's so helpful, right? So things that we didn't necessarily know, you and I growing up, but I think yep. they know that they know that now. And I hope they're they're applying that in school. I don't know. I haven't been keeping up. But well, it's one of the challenges with school, like I was saying earlier, like you kind of you put a whole bunch of kids in one class, and that might work for like, 90% of the kids or 75 or 50 or however many, but there's going to be other kids that you know, it just doesn't fit their style of learning. Doesn't mean they're not going to learn. That doesn't mean they're not ready and willing to learn, but maybe it's just not kind of where they're at right that at that time. So that's really cool. And I, so I guess like if people are interested, they should go f follow Holly on, uh, on social media too, <laughs> and follow your guys's journey with that. Cause, uh, it is really cool and, uh, really neat to see. Um, I, I have to ask you, this is a rad dad show. So I need to ask you, do you consider mm -hmm. yourself a rad dad? <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. I, uh, I, I feel like I'm a good dad. I, I prioritize being a dad. I, I, as the kid, as, as I kind of, it took me a couple of years, my daughter, my firstborn was a, a few years I was touring a lot and I realized I don't want to be the one that she's like, who's that? You know, when I walk in the door from touring. Yeah. So, uh, last, the last, I would say, six to eight years has been a, a conscious effort to not tour as solid. I've done a few, there's been a few and I've been actually up in Bremerton while this family has been in Texas for like months, but that's, that's honestly like circumstance and things like that. So yeah. I try to minimize that. Right. So that's my priority. Um, and well, it's and what works for, for your family, right? Sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Like, you know, yeah. it's the same as schooling. Like you, you have a different situation. You're, you're a professional musician. You're, you're, you know, your schedule isn't the same as kind of a lot of other people are working nine to five. So you have to kind of figure out what works for your family. Yeah. Yeah. 
so yeah, for the most part, we've been doing these weekends, these big weekends. So that way I can be home during the week, hang out with the kids, have dinner with the family. Yeah. Actually, that's a priority, honestly. And I feel like I'll never regret that. You're never going to go like, man, I really wish I hadn't had so many nights with the family. You know, <laughs> like you're not going to think yeah. that like, sure. May, I mean, at this point with MXPX, we have a name. You, there's always, there's always going to be some sort of community as long, you know, e even if we went away and never released music, people are going to say, Oh, I like that album. I like that song, whatever. Like mm -hmm. there's that. Right. So like, um, not that I can take it for granted that they would want to come see us live or, or, you know, pay to see us or whatever. But, but I feel like you have to balance, you have to some, some, some sort of somehow weigh your actual life, which MXPX is my actual life. Like mm -hmm. it, I've literally spent my whole life doing this, uh, you know, since I was a teen and, but it's okay to have these like sort of dips, changes, um, with Tom and Yuri, you know, it's actually pretty good that we do weekends. They prefer that right now. Um, but it doesn't mean we won't change it up once the kids get a little older. Yeah. Boom. Now they want to go on tour, you know, so they're just at the age right now where they're starting to go to shows or yep. they actually haven't started, but we're starting, we've got some plan and pretty sure it's, it's, you know, I hope it happens, but I'm trying to get the kids, uh, to go see the descendants. Oh my God. So well, you can see I'm a fan here. So I see, I see. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I am as well. Yeah. Love those guys. So, um, I think it's going to happen and, um, that'll Is, happen. Are you talking about in Seattle? Real soon in Seattle. Yeah. yeah. They're playing yeah. tomorrow. So that's right. So we'll know soon, but anyway, uh, I'm trying, you know, they haven't been to a show really ever. They've been to, um, what was it? A, a C Jojo Siwa show. My, my daughter went. Okay. She was a, when she was a kid, she went with her friend, Jojo Siwa. So she's been to a, a live show, but she's never been to a punk show. And my my son Rhodes, he's never been to a punk show, punk show either. Um, so it's, I think it's a good first show. And yeah. then MXPX will be their second show. They'll see MXPX um, in in October. Right, because that that show in Seattle you're talking about the Descendants one. I was actually looking at um, is that is that the one? Is Dillinger Four playing with them? Um, I the don't one? know, but it's Jawbreaker. Okay. Oh yeah, Jawbreaker too. And is that outdoors? I honestly I didn't look at the info. Okay. So I know it's I, bumper I, shoot, so it might be outdoors. Okay. But it might be indoors. It also could be indoors because it's Seattle. Yeah, I was looking at maybe taking my daughter to that show, actually, because, yeah, I'm a big fan. And so I was thinking about uh, doing a bit of a trip there, too. But, yeah, expo like exposing your kids to live music, obviously, that's something that's been really important in your life. So, yeah. um, like, I'm curious, what, what do your kids think about what you do? Like, I'm sure they've seen tons of videos and there's, you know, they're aware, right? So what do they think about your job? They think it's normal, Yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I know they, they don't think it's normal as in everybody else does what I do, but they see, you know, kids today grow up seeing people online, YouTubers, uh, pop stars, actors. Um, they're being entertained all the time. So to me, to, to me, as me being like an entertainer, I don't know if they see me in the same way that they see like the other entertainment. Um, I'd have to ask them that, but... Um, but they love me, you know, like, it's like, it's tattoo, just dad. like, yeah, like, you know, they don't see the tattoos or anything like that. I don't think it's just, it's just dad. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Well, I was talking to you, you had him on your show recently on your podcast, and we didn't even mention that at the beginning. So the Mike, Mike Carrera podcast, but um, you had Brendan Scholes on recently from uh, Mercy Music. Yep. And he was telling me like, uh, when his son saw him play for the first time, it was like, he couldn't sort of believe the guy he was seeing up on the stage. So I wonder if, right. uh, if your kids will feel that same way. I don't know. Like, I feel like you're kind of the same guy up there, like from my perspective, but I don't know, maybe your kids will, will be surprised when they see that in person. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure they're going to be blown away. Yeah. I, I, I have a feeling cause I'm pretty chill <laughs> with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, you know, it, it's, it's going to be, it's one of those things you kind of build up in your mind in a weird way. Um, 
and it'll be be just as epic, but it won't be what I'm thinking. You know, it'll be something different. I'm sure. Yeah. You know, the, oh, it'll I be mean, so cool. I'm even thinking of like, I wonder what the stage looks like. I have no idea because I haven't been there yet. You know, so yeah, yeah. Anyway, we're so, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, well, I hope. Yeah, you managed to make it to the Descendants. That sounds like that'll be a really cool time for you guys to go. And where and that's a little different from them seeing you play because you can enjoy it together, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can kind of like walk them through it for the first time, and then the, the next time I'll be on stage and they'll be by them, you know, not by themselves. They'll be with my wife, but yeah, yeah. I, I you know, they're going to get treated so well with the Descendants guys. Um, yeah, These you guys know, are just great. knowing knowing who they are, you know, <laughs> they'll get, they'll get, hey, you want some snacks? Of course they want snacks. They're kids. Kids always well, want snacks. Maybe you need to prepare your kids to get on the stage and do the all logistics. They've done that a few times. Have you ever seen that? Oh, funny. They yeah, get their yeah. kids out to do to read the all logistics. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like, maybe they need to study up. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know that. Um, you were mentioning that like the first couple of years were a bit of an adjustment for you as a dad. So you you kind mm -hmm. of um mentioned sort of getting used to that and balancing touring and stuff. Tell me a little bit about that. Like, um, did you have some fears about becoming a dad? Did you feel like you were ready? Like what, what was that kind of initial period like for you? I don't think anybody's ever ready to be a dad or, or a mom. Um, because it's never exactly what you think it's going to be. Right. No one could ever explain really. And, it, and it's obviously a little different for everybody too, you know, mm -hmm. your level of involvement, your, um, you know, what your kid is like, you know, there's all types of little babies, but, um, for me, yeah, it was just, you know, I was young, still not that young to be honest, but like, I think artists and musicians, especially touring musicians are very young at heart. They're young. They're stunted a little, um, they're not made to grow up as much as, as your average, um, going hard in the paint business business person you know that's going oh, i need a career like those people grow up pretty fast we stay young um so having kids you can still stay young you can ignore it but i, I feel like for me you know i let it i let it take the best of me you know and like let's let's do let's spend some time with this with this um and it was during a time when the 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 music business was just kind of starting to get better. Like it really was, it wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't good before that. So like leading up to when I had kids, I was grinding, I'm still grinding, but just in a different way, um, different levels of grind. Um, but you know, 2000, I'm talking 2007, 2008 into the, into 2013, like there was a, a lot of uncertainty um, in the music business. Yeah. Streaming wasn't streaming was getting going, but it wasn't really something that an artist understood yet. And I was just used to just going, going, going. So I just kept going kind of through. I mean, I was there for the birth. Don't worry. I was there for both birth. So uh, but like I was working a lot after that for, or after the first one and realized this can't be this can't be sustained. Right? Yeah. Like I, if I want to sustain my career it's okay to put the brakes on and like coast a little bit and live life and then pick it back up. And, and obviously it worked because I mean, here we are, but um, I think don't be afraid to do that in life. Um, there's, there's a lot of moms you hear about. I know this is the rad dad show, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of mom, moms you hear about that are like raising their kids, raising their kids. And that's their whole life. And when that's done, they get depressed. And they have nothing to like really live for. And there's other stories of moms that have a plot kind of like thought about that and gone, okay, I need to find something or, or they've just been lucky and found something and not tried. Um, whether it's becoming a, a novelist, um, yeah. you know, become this famous writer. And now you've got this whole second life and, and, you know, career that's something you never thought about, you know, five years ago, that kind of thing. Like that's something to dream for. I mean, it's, it's not going to happen in the same way for everybody, but you got to find your way, right? Like, what do you dream about? And as a parent, you have to be able to put that on hold. Yes. Um, put that text on hold, put that, whatever game you're playing on your phone mm -hmm. down. That's a struggle. I mean, I, that's a very real everyday kind of, you know, nobody wants to talk about or yeah. hear about struggle, but 
um, that's like the core of, of what we need to do as parents is just give our kids attention and time and try to take a step back before we put our own um, mood or, or stress and anxiety into the situation. It makes it worse a lot of times. And, and I feel yeah. like I've learned a lot over the years and, and I'm still bad at that, but nowhere near as bad as I used to be. So like just getting better a little bit, of, you know, every year, less and less reactive, less and less stressed about the kids or about, oh, well, they just ruined that battery or that wall or that yeah. <laughs> car that, you know, whatever. That's so, yeah. Well, there's a couple things you said there that I think are really interesting. So one is like, um, you know, obviously, and, and so what we're trying to explore on this show is always like, well, what is a rad dad? And you said, yeah, like, I like the way you answered that question earlier. You kind of said, yeah, I think I'm a good dad. And that's sort of what we're trying to figure out. Like, well, what's that definition of a good dad? What do you need to do to, to be a good dad, to be a rad dad? Obviously there's one aspect of this show that's like, well, you're a, you know, a musician and that's cool and different and unique. And that's why we're interested in your, your opinion on it. Um, but it's like, how do you be a good dad? And especially in those unique situations. So um, you're talking about like giving your kid your attention. And that seems so simple and so straightforward, but it's so hard in today's world, especially I'm thinking, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, but you do so much DIY stuff. Your Facebook group is always, you know, popping off. You're, you've got your podcast, you've got your, I mean, you talked about MXPX, you're in Goldfinger, you got solo stuff, you've like, you're busy. And so there's a lot like that. Your phone, I'm sure is just like insane all the time. And there's emails and there's, you know, decisions to be made. And sometimes in the moment, I find this all the time, like in the moment, it feels like that thing is, is really important. And I want to focus on that, but it really isn't, you know, and like, how do you train your brain to like, step back and just be like, man, if I don't answer that email until tomorrow, and instead I play with my kids here, they want to play a game. Like, you know, nobody's going to die because I didn't answer that email right now yeah and so i'm curious like what that experience is like for you are you like am i am i kind of you know touching on something something real for you there like i certainly know it's a thing for me oh i mean you you described definitely at least part of what i'm dealing with you know because because there's so much more than that even but yeah it's yeah. constant text messaging back and forth with either the band group management type people um people that you know band guys i'm like talking to band guys and trying to get them to like let us broadcast on their yeah. Facebook <laughs> things like that lately anyway uh, but it's always something like that um day-to-day -day management uh dealing with artwork and audio hey can you get me this audio of this can you get me video can you can you oh I'll tweet that for you no problem like it's all this stuff and and it's like hey if I get a a, a text from like our management hey can you handle the tweet right now blah 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 I might be with my kid and be like, Hey, sorry, I got to like tweet this. It's like, what are you talking about? You got to tweet this, you know, yeah. like they don't understand what, what tweet is. They kind of do now probably they're, they're a little older, but it's just funny, you know, to put it in perspective of, yeah, this is crazy. This is quite nuts. And so I do try to compartmentalize. Like I don't get too crazy into the texting. I do tech a little texting at home. Um, and I do sometimes just prepare social media posts or whatever. But for the most part, I try to wait until I get to the studio where I'm away from my family. They don't have to see me on my phone. I, they yeah. see me on my phone enough. So it is a struggle. You nailed it. It's just one of those things where it's not 100%. We're, mm -hmm. we're professional parents, but we're batting. We're not batting a thousand. Nobody's batting a thousand in, in, in professional sports. And, you know, to get to even 500 is almost impossible. So mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's what it is with social media, with your phone, with your whatever, being distracted. And then your kids like, put your phone down. You know you know how embarrassing it is for your kid, you know, even in yes. your own house to, to yell at you, put your phone down, dad. You don't want that, right? <laughs> yeah. My daughter just said that to me last night. She took out a knife from the, the drawer and started cutting up her own snack to eat at bedtime. Because so I was looking at my phone. I felt like such an idiot, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, and that happens. So that that's the so the end of it. Like, okay, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let me put it down. But so 
it's not always, uh, yeah, I know I'm putting my phone down before I talk to my kids and then I'm not picking it up. Like, it's just never like that. So yeah. you just always have to listen to more and more rad dad podcasts and be reminded, Hey, you're going to just pick it up again. It's like literally attached to the hip. We're addicted to it. Um, yeah. we want this dopamine rush, you know, it's cheap dopamine, but the amount of dopamine I get when my kid reads something that's like a cool word or says something, tells me something with good vocabulary. And it's just yeah. like, where did you hear that? I don't care that you, I mean, I know you didn't make it up, but like, that's cool. You know, that's dopamine to me as well. So I'm trying to like force myself away from the cheap thrills, enjoy the hard the hard thrills, which is the kids. I mean, the kids yeah. give you that, they give you everything, but they give you that stress too. And they, you know, it's tiring because they constantly want to eat and you're, <laughs> you're always making snacks. And yeah. where's my water bottle? Yeah. Where's my water <laughs> bottle? They, like where, I don't know, where'd you put it? Yeah. So yeah, but I love it. And, and yeah. play with me, play with me. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, you, you, I think that's such a good point. Like um, I think there's a lot of like, guilt we feel as parents especially when we don't talk to other parents and realize it's that it's like a shared experience but there's a lot of guilt about like like it's just funny to hear you say your kid you know tells you to put your phone down so because when my kids do that I feel like the worst right but yeah. it's kind of <laughs> happening to everybody out there and and so I think probably step one is just to be aware and mm -hmm. try you know, try to, to put the focus where it needs to be. It, it is really hard, but I want, I also want to circle back to something you were getting at too, with like, um, passions and like, maybe, maybe the flip side of that whole coin of like putting all of your energy into your kids and maybe not taking care of your own passions mm -hmm. and kind of what makes you, you. Um, and so I don't know, how do you achieve that balance? Like how, for you, obviously, that's a very important thing, because that's not just your passion, you know, the music you make, it's your business, it's your livelihood, it's, you know, how you support your family, it's all of that. Yeah. Um, so so how do you foster that? Like, how do you maintain that in individuality? And how do you prioritize that against your other? I don't know, your other um, yeah. obligations as a parent? Maybe in that way, I'm not such a rad dad, because I spend a lot of time in the studio, I spend a lot of time working on these plans, talking on the phone, texting in secrecy, whatever it is, you know, like doing this thing away from the family that um, I, you know, I just feel, I feel like I've just done it this way for so long. It would be weird if I was just in front of them all the time. Like, like we just talked about, yeah. they don't want to see me on my phone. I'd rather than not see me. So in that way, I, I feel like I balance it out by being home for dinner when I can. And I'm not, a, I'm not home for every dinner, every, you know, throughout the week, we have practices usually in the evenings or afternoon into the evening. And yeah. so I'm not home, you know, for that. But if we don't have that, I can schedule interviews. I can schedule my own podcast. I can do videos, edit, write, whatever it is I want to do. I can do during the day, do it, be home for dinner, hang with them. And then I go back at night. I work at night. So for those that don't, think I have a cushy, whatever. I mean, sure, it's cushy, but I, I come back and start again and have another, not a same, it's not like a carbon copy of a work day. It's like, I do different things. I might be practicing, come here and practice. And I almost always have a conference call with management, usually at night, um, after all the work's done. Because during the day, you want to be working, not being on some meeting. I mean, yeah. that's me personally. So I do all my calls uh, that aren't I do all my internal calls usually later at night. And then I do outside into the world, bands, brands, people, movers, shakers during the day, because that's part of work, I guess. But so, yeah, in those ways, you, you know, I'm passionate about what we do. It pays the bills. Like you said, it's, it's what I do. Anybody that, ha that has their own business knows that you can't turn it off when you go home. You know, yeah. it's hard. It's very hard. And I don't think you necessarily should. Um, but one thing I definitely learned over the last few years, um, uh, pre COVID, I feel like I learned this. So it wasn't a reflection after getting to spend so much time with my family or whatever, but that was great. I got to say that was great for a yeah. lot of people and probably terrible for a lot of people. So, um, um, but I learned to just 
I learned to try to just take a step back when needed, you know, and, and I learned that a while ago and I wasn't always like that. And I would freak out and I would stress people out. And I still, like we, like we say, you know, you, you're, you're not batting a thousand. You have those moments. Yeah. Even professionals. Right. So, you know, as a professional musician, I'm not necessarily singing my best every single night, but I try, I try to make my best be, sorry. I try to make my, my 50% be better than most people's hundred percent. That That's my goal, you know, as a, as a, somebody mm -hmm. that's like a singer. Right. But it doesn't mean I'm always going to get there. Right. Um, so I think, I think that's what it is, is, you know, I, I, I keep coming back to this theme, which is mistakes will be made. It's a, yeah. song, on the, it's a song on the record. And then there's somebody pointed out online that there's, I say mis the word mistakes 13 times on the album and there's yep. 13 songs on the album. Um, yeah, that means something. Yeah. I saw that post in on your Facebook group. Yeah. We screw up a lot, you know, all <laughs> of us humans. And I think um, it's just part of the human experience and parenting is like that next level. It really, really like puts, puts your first levels into into perspective and yeah. i feel like that's why maybe that's part of why this new record is really hitting the fans so well fans that grew up listening to us and ha now have kids can hear this song it's not a kid it's not a parenting record at all it's just a life record but but i feel like you can grasp onto things in a different way and then if you don't have kids if you've just been living life you're gonna you're gonna hear this record and it's gonna mean something and and i think that's it's not something we're trying to do all the time, but we're, I'm always trying to just be true and try to find the most universal truth in what I'm feeling. Um, but then you got to personalize it. You know, you yeah. do, I think, but sorry to get into the song thing, but no, no, that um, no. I, yeah. What a great metaphor for what we're talking about. Mistakes will be made. I mean, I think in this era of like being on social media, right like mm -hmm. all the time you kind of look at what other people are doing and you can't help but compare yourself to them all the time and so i think there's like a there there's a it's a totally natural thing to like you said it yourself like oh maybe i'm not a rad dad because i you like make my calls for work or whatever like man that, like that's your job <laughs> so you, you know you can't but but we're kind of like trained to like knock ourselves for those things like we feel like every time we don't Okay, you need to spend time with your kids for sure. No yeah. question. But sometimes you need to not spend time with your kids. My wife and I were just talking yeah. about this last night. Like, same thing as you. My kids, you know, last night were like, Daddy, Daddy, come play with me. And I had to do some stuff. My wife wasn't home. I was like, you know what? I'm going to set up this mat with uh, your cars or whatever. And they were, they just started playing after a few minutes. Like, they kind of stopped bugging me and they played and they played so nice together for half an hour or 45 minutes and that was probably a really good experience for them and maybe better than if i had i don't know sat and done whatever with them and so you have to give them those opportunities too and we can't i think hold ourselves as parents to um like an, a standard you can't meet yeah right for sure like there's for other sure. things going on in your life so mistakes will be made so i, I love that connection so let, well let's talk about the album um tell me about the journey to get here like it just came out last week I, I love it. I've been, like I said, I've been a long time MXPX fan. I just feel like it's, it's, you know, it's kind of, it's MXPX, but it's something new. Like you said, a new era, there's this positivity. I mean, you guys did so much work um, kind of in the quick ramp up to the release of this record. There's so much happening out there right now. Just tell me about that experience. I'm sure the the reception and the response you've got has just been awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's so hard to like find a way, not just home, but find a way to get the word out on new music, on anything, right? We have shows, we have music, we have vinyl, we have all this stuff in the MXPeaks.com store. Um, and to get people to care about that, you know, you can't just run an ad, you know, it just doesn't work yeah. like that. You got to build anticipation. You got to build some sort of like FOMO and all, all of that. So, um, you know, and, and, and to burst out of each little bubble, you know, um, find new audiences, yeah. find, find people that w like to check you out, but just never see it. You know, it's like these algorithms or whatever, don't choose to show you MXPX, even though they might like it. So like you get 
trying to find those people is the hardest. So um, it can be stressful, but having a good idea was something we knew we had. And that comes down to our live stream. You know, we started live streaming over the pandemic. Yeah. Um, started out acoustic, which is easy. You know, one mic, acoustic, blah, blah, blah. You can sing, you can do that all day. But once we went into the full band thing, then the work really begins. Okay, more lighting, more cameras, longer cabling, microphones. Let's put it all the audio up to the studio and back through this little, this little cable and onto the internet. So here we are trying out all this stuff and it really was cool to, to do, you know, we did a, a bunch of shows. We did like 20 shows or something like that. Um, all live, all completely live, not pre-recorded. Yeah. And it was, it was like having a live, like a late night show, right? Like we would just do them, you know, every, every two weeks or so during the pandemic. Um, and then, you know, we went dark for a little while, we went away and I started writing and we started practicing and, um, the world was still kind of going through a lot of just weirdness and political strife and wars and mm -hmm. the end of COVID, get, trying to get out of COVID. So it was just a weird time. So we're like coming through, um, and releasing this record for us, you know, we, we try to make it sound like a, a bigger thing, you know, but, but to, to the way we see the world, you know, we really do look at the world and we see ourselves as, as part of whatever this whole thing is, you know, whether or not most of the world's ever heard the name MXPX, we're still a part of this world, right? Just like you are, you know? Yeah. So, so we try to make our mark the best we can. And, and, uh, we partnered with a ton of bands, a ton of yeah. brands, um, all over. And we went, we went live simultaneously on like 20 channels every night, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the weekend that the album came out and it was just flooding the punk rock feeds and the podcasting feeds and the, the spin magazines and alt presses and, and things like that. And we got simple plan, you know, Kings from the great white North, um, let us use their, their socials, their YouTube, love their simple Facebook, plan, yeah. a bunch of other bands that we love. Let us go on theirs. And that really just got, got everybody talking, got everybody's eyes and ears a little bit more like, Oh, I might check out that MXPX album, you know, whereas before nobody really even, knew we had a record coming out you know our core fan base of course did but yeah. the real work started boom when we we started uh doing those live streams and and we had put out a video and, and done a pre-order yep. for the record which went great you know it was awesome but i was really surprised pleasantly surprised by the reaction of the actual album release in the actual weekend of live streams it was yeah. amazing you know, it's funny um, that you say that too. Um, you guys went live on the the night the record came out or the, the night before, I guess, like just as the record was coming out. And I was like seeing all these notifications pop up on my socials, like, oh, MXPX is live. You know, it's like Teenage Bottle Rock and a whole bunch of other folks. And so me and my daughter, like we were sitting actually here in my office and I was like, oh, let's put this on. So we watched a bit of it. We couldn't watch the whole thing. It was just about bedtime. So sorry, I yep. didn't see the whole thing. But um, yeah, wouldn't want to be a, still still want to be a rad dad and get my kids to bed on time. Yeah, so, um, well, that's the whole idea is like, yeah. that's why we did multiples. That's why we did multiple yeah. channels and multiple nights was people were going to miss it. People weren't, weren't going to be able to watch the full thing. So just get the word out. Hey, this is our new album. This is, this song's this. Maybe, I don't know what you heard, you know, the beginning of the ending or the middle, but. Yeah, the you know. beginning. Yeah, it yeah. was it was so good, and and you're right. Like, what a cool uh, what a cool thing. Like, you almost couldn't ignore that this this record was coming out. Um, yeah, it was, and such a like celebratory release. And then you mentioned videos, so you've got two videos out now, right? Yeah, we have stay up all night out. Um, really, really like kind of like a you think it's a ballad, but then it hits hard and it's a punk song. So it's kind of a both mid-tempo song and a fast song all in yeah. one and i just love the way it makes you feel you know it's um it's a feel-good song but it also is kind of trying to hit home trying to like make you think about what's really important in life and and what what are you going to stay up all night for mm -hmm. so and who do you have that will stay up all night for you um but the next song is completely opposite it's just a funny quirky mxpx song called cautious optimistic yeah. And the video is is hilarious because it's Yuri, our drummer, 
He's the star. He's it's a it's a sequel to Chick Magnet. So the return of the Chick Magnet. Yes. Yeah. So we we <laughs> we do all the tricks that we did on that, but just in the new a new setting and a kind of a new uh, theme. Yeah. It's worth so, a check out if you're yeah fan. totally so good and we'll yeah we'll post links to all that as well and um yeah it, geez it, i think find a way home is like the the rad dad soundtrack here it feels like oh we're making all these connections with the the subject matter of the songs yeah um so the new record what, what other plans do you have well i was going to mention too i've got a few of them here but uh you guys did um reissues of uh some of your vinyl earlier this year as well right so you did life in general slowly going the way of the buffalo ever passing moment re-release on vinyl yeah. so like yeah. it's been so busy for you guys you had the box set was that last year yeah it's like the year before i think and yeah you know we're just honestly those the box set the reissues that's all fans that's all seeing that fans want that stuff seeing that fans are paying really a lot of money people are getting gouged so it's like okay let's let's flood the market and give people what they want and and do a little bit of that i mean i, I know that. there's there's always going to be a secondary market do as you do i don't care um but just trying to provide the fans with with at least something right like and then if it sells out again you know we'll try to get it back if we can but um with the new record find a way home we have like seven variants or something like that's crazy um we have a picture disc we've got an alt artwork with a die cut cover yeah um bunch of different work you know versions of the vinyl yeah we're, we're pretty happy you know just being able to do that it's it's cool um yeah find a way home we have we have uh new videos we have more videos that we haven't released yet that uh you know they're gonna be fun the fans are gonna love them punk rock fans are gonna love them and um i don't know what's next but i think i know what's next but i don't want to say because sometimes we case. change your mind yeah we yeah. do we we do have a we always have a plan but we always like re always reserve the the sort of in our in our minds like okay this might not work out if this all lines up like this we go but if it doesn't line up like this we don't go i don't know if you watch like a show like big brother or yeah. Sur survivor uh uh on cbs is it survivor i think so yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm like i've watched it so many times i don't even know the name of it uh things like like strategic in a group of people like you know that kind of thing and it's funny that you know not that we're super strategic in in what we do but we do have to line it up it's like okay this is the plan but we in order for this plan to work we gotta like convince this person convince this person convince this person to give us their bracelet or whatever it is right so um we do that and then it's never a trick though like we're not trying to rip people off we're just trying to like let we're trying to get people to help us we're trying to get yep. people to help us tell I'll tell lean on your community exactly yeah yeah so it's uh i love working like that because when when you ask your friend that's in a band for help um like less than jake and we we love those guys. I mean, we go backstage, we're hugging, we're telling stories. It, it's like, it's like old times. It's like now times, you know, it's not just old times. It's like the now times are just as good with these guys, you know, to have friends like that, that have been in the business that long, um, alongside you, not necessarily, you know, we've been in the business together. We don't play together that often. So we're actually playing, um, with less than Jake, it's MXPX, less than Jake, Reliant K, and Smoking Popes, January sixth at the Hollywood Palladium, right. Los Angeles, California. It's gonna be epic. Tickets are already on sale, going. So don't wait if you want to go. I know you're far. Uh, we'll we'll get up to Canada as well. We're we're trying to plan some some dates next year. Awesome. Twenty twenty four. So we're we're working on some stuff. So I missed you last time you were here. You were in Calgary, I think, and I had I can't remember exactly something with the kids or whatever, and I I couldn't go. Um, yeah, but my Those friends are still epic. talking about it. Yeah, because it was, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a like smaller show too in Calgary. It was at Dickens Pub, I think, if I remember correctly. And well, we did, yeah, we did two nights, two nights at right. Dickens. Both yeah. sold out. We probably could have done a couple more, but it's, I mean, you only do we only do weekends, so yeah. But but uh, I think I think it was just the deal that they gave us was great or something. But yeah. we really enjoyed playing there. Definitely a small place for well we probably come back to a, maybe a bigger place at this point, but I like the, I like the social D vibe sometimes yeah. to do a bunch of shows, you know, in a smaller place, yeah. that kind of thing. We do that sometimes, you know, at the show box in Seattle or 
at the um, Troubadour a couple couple years ago. We did three nights there in in L.A. Right. Troubadour. So um, yeah, things like that are fun. But but at some point, yeah, you know, we, we like to mix it up. We like to open up tickets for more people, things like that. Try We try to do it right. You know, we do based on how many tickets we think we can sell in a city. We'll yeah. try to go to go to that venue. Yeah, love to have you in Edmonton if if possible. I know we're a little bit out of the way, but uh, that would be great. Um, so yeah, new album, Find a Way Home. I'm super excited about it. Um, yeah, I just wish you guys all the best. I want to end on a little bit of a, a parenting kind of note and ask you, mm-hmm. and maybe a, a, a positive note, like tell me um, some of the most rewarding things about being a dad, or maybe the most rewarding thing about being a dad. I'm putting you on the spot here. That's yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to think of like the real moments of when your kids are happy, when they look at you, when they're safe, like all happen all the time, you know? And I, and I really, my kids show me a lot. Of, I think, okay, I'll t- this is, this is very, very personal, but whenever I leave to go to the studio or to the airport or wherever I'm literally anywhere, if they're home, they one, see me out, hug me three, four times. And then I get in my car. Sometimes I have to get out of my car, hug them again. And it's my daughter, especially my son sometimes might be on his iPad or something. And he'll like come out at the last minute, but but, uh, she's always there. And he's like half the time, but then they're always, when I go up the driveway, there's like a little hole in the trees, in the bushes where you can see into the yard from the driveway going up before I get to the street. And they always say, bye, dad, love you, love you, love you, bye, dad, love you, over and over and over. And I say the same thing back and I drive away as they say it. And I'm like hearing it as they're driving away. And even when it's raining, they'll go out there. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's just like, I think about that and I think, Someday that's probably going to end. I mean, it, it has to, you yeah. know, and it's just like, oh my God. And it doesn't happen necessarily every single day because I'm not always there, you know, I'm always at the, the right, or they're not always there in the mornings. But if we're there and I'm there, it happens. And yeah. that's probably the most rewarding part about this whole adventure so far, which is so cool to be able to pinpoint. Yeah, that is really neat. Well, it's this moment of like pure connection right? Like it's not really yeah. about anything else or what you're doing or whatever. It's just about like that connection between you yeah. two. That's, that's really sweet. Yeah. And the fam, you know, my wife comes out too. And yeah. if she's around, not always same, same with Rhodes, she might be doing something, but she'll come out and wave. And then I do the same thing for her and my kid, my kids do the same thing for her. So we don't really have the same thing when we're in Waco. It's like a, di- you know, it's like a different setup, right? We so, don't have the hole in the tree to we don't have the hole in the tree. Yeah. You know, so. It's not quite the same. They, they jump up on the fence and wave, which is cool. But, um, I think, I think it's important for people to realize, and, and I find this as an artist, very surprising, but when you come up with a really good idea in your life about anything, and it could, and for me, I think this, this tree thing, this hole in the tree thing mm-hmm. is a good idea. It's simpler than you realize. It's so much simpler than you ever thought it was going to be when you're like, okay, I need to come up with the next thing. What is the next thing? And you might already have talked about it. It's just, you got to, you got to realize how it connects to everything. And the, the thing itself is usually very simple. So like say the idea for live streaming, that's already an idea we did, but live streaming to all of these other channels where nobody would ever in a, in a hundred days, think about MXPX. Like that's, that's the idea. It's simple. Now it gets a little more complicated when you actually have to do it, but the idea should be as simple as possible. Yeah. That's my advice. And, and, and it works with parenting. It works with being an artist. It works with life. I think. Keep it simple. Yeah. I love that. That's a great note to, to wrap it up on Mike. Thank you so much for your time. It was really awesome chatting with you. I appreciate uh, your support of the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Brad. Congrats on the new record.